so strong. She is educated, talented. She knows her worth. She's cultural, a woman of substance. And when she walks, the world will stop and stare. She. It's exactly 10 minutes past 7 p.m. You're listening to 99.5. This is Asasi Radio, the voice of our land. My name is Na Ashoko, your host on Just Us. Our super, super cool all-girl talk show. We gather every Tuesday to talk about the things that matter to us girls. When we started off this show, we had a lot of conversations about love and, and beauty and so on. About a month ago, we started having conversations which have evoked so many emotions in my heart. Last week, we spoke about loss, dealing with the death of a loved one. I had two amazing ladies here who shared um, stories about how they lost their, their parents, father and mother, and how they grieved as women, the toll it had on them, and how they are still dealing with the loss. I learned so much from that episode that I could ever have learned from reading um, pamphlets or magazines on loss. Today, I'd like us to talk about this even more. I'd like us to take the, the topic um, a step further. Today, I'll be having conversations with my dear friend, Ama Cordelia Salome, and we're going to be talking about <sighs> the many unspoken rules about grieving the death of a loved one. Um, Amma lost her dear son a few months ago. It was a loss to many people, people who knew him and people who did not know him. Strangers on the internet were distraught when Kofi passed. Many months on, Amma is here to share her experience, the things she learned, the things she felt as a mother, the many hurdles she had to overcome, and the learnings from her experience. If you're listening to us and you have lost a child, we'd like to hear from you. You can WhatsApp me on 020-000-0995. 020-000-0995. We are also live on Facebook, so do log on to facebook.com um, forward slash Asasi Radio 995 and you can watch us live. Hello, Ama. Hi, Na. How are you? By his grace. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for having me. And I, I cannot say this enough, but every time I see you or I hear you speak, I can't even look at you when I say this, but you... You make it possible for the rest of us somehow. You make it possible for the rest of us to be okay. 
somehow the strength that you have shown and you continue to show is incredible. I would like to say thank you, but it's not just all of me. It's um, definitely the grace of God and um, with the help of super awesome friends and family, it helps me get by the day. It does. How are you doing? I, I wish I could answer. There's the highs and the lows and um, really it's difficult. It's difficult. And a lot of people just see what's on the outside. And to be honest, um, I've had to be strong. I didn't think I'll be able to even move out or get out of the house. But when I look at his little brother and how it's affecting him as well, I've got to stand up and, and pull myself together. And especially when I think about Kofi and, you know, before I go on, uh, I would want to say a very big thank you to Asasi Radio. Because Kofi, a year ago, actually, Kofi was in your studios. Yes, yeah. Yes. Um, and you guys, like, welcomed him. He was always excited. A few times I will drop him here and then, yeah. you know, stay and watch him um, have the shows with you. Yeah. And Solomon Tay, Solomon Tay, Solomon Tay. <laughs> yeah. God bless you. Thank you so much. So, yeah, now, I think on the outside, I look okay. On the inside, I'm, I'm dying inside. I am. I don't know how to explain it. I've stopped explaining myself to people because nobody really understands. Um, I, don't, I don't take it personal because it will take somebody who's felt the loss of a child to probably understand how I feel. So, if I'm here today, it's the grace of God and it is because I have... Um, I have to live for Zane and to push forward Kofi's legacy as well. You know, he was very big on giving. Yes, yes. And he was very big on music. Mm-hmm. And so we, uh, yeah, we, we, set, we actually have set up a foundation for him. Not fully um, done with it yet, but yeah, there are things that I'm working on in his memory. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah. And I hope that you're able to see it through, I mean, We'll all give you the help and support that we can, and we'll continue to ask for it from everyone who would and is listening to us to see it to fruition. And he will be happy. He, he is. Will. He, he is. is. He is happy. He is. Ama, tell me your story for those who don't know. Um, okay, I'll do happened? that briefly. So, my son was diagnosed with a brain tumor. He had been complaining of headaches and. Um, I'd say for like a year. And every time, each time I went to the hospital, they would tell us it's something like it was um, a tonsil infection, ton- tonsillitis, or he had issues with his, he actually was wearing glasses. And they, they said, you know, sometimes when the lens is not the right type, it could cause severe headaches. And so they changed, I mean, that was, the, that was like a month, no, no, a few weeks actually to his diagnosis. We're going to change his lens if after a week, He's still complaining. Then we go further to run test. And they did change his lens. He was okay for about a week. And then he started complaining. And they're like, you know, we have to run CT scans now. And we did. And they found something. And what the doctor said was, oh, there was a cyst. That's what they suspected. Until we had to go to Kolebu, only for me to be told it, um, what they call a craniopharyngioma. It's not, it's kind of a very difficult tumor to treat. Even I've, I've done a lot of reading around it. And, even the doctors outside. I mean, the doctors in Kolebu, um, Dr. Banka, one of the one of the and Dr. Boyati are neurosurgeons who have practiced in the United States. And they told us we are, what we are telling you is the same thing they'll tell you, even if you go abroad. And it is true. I've read stories, you know. And so we he went there and they had to have two surgeries. The first surgery was very successful. Um, the first surgery was actually to place a tube in in him. So what, what was happening was there was a buildup of um, cerebrospinal fluid in his brain. So where the tumor was sitting was preventing fluid from going into his spinal area. So for the doctors say it had been happening for about two years, considering the size of the tumor. And so he was complaining of, he started, had started throwing up, he had started having you know, vision problems and all of that. But they said, look, we came in in good time because when he, when you lose your sight from a tumor. That's it. There's nothing that anybody can do about it. Thankfully, he hadn't lost his sight. And so we had the first surgery where they place what they call a shunt. It's like a tube. So they create um, a, a hole like in the skull 
and they placed in the tube from the skull right into his lower abdomen. And that tube was supposed to be there for the rest of his life. And the first surgery was very, very successful. After that, he had he had put videos out there of his, of his icon, Sarkodie. And Sarkodie, thank you, Sarkodie. Sarkodie also made time to talk to him and helped raise funds for his for the second surgery, which was the main surgery to take out the tumor. And then we had the second surgery. By far, now I remember that Tuesday, it was 6th April. I couldn't go down to the theater with my brother and I wouldn't eat. My uncle would come, Uncle Johnny says, let's go and get food. I said, no, I can't eat. I hadn't eaten all day. I was just so scared because prior to the surgery, the second surgery, the briefing, what could happen going in there, where the tumor was sitting, they could destroy nerves, very, very sensitive nerves. You could come out blind, you could come out a vegetable, but hey, they had to take out the tumor. So I'm just sitting there and I'm praying. And well, he went in, I think, around 9 a.m., around 5, 5 p.m. They say he's out, he's in the ICU, you have to wait a bit. So I was there when they came to say, he's asking for you, his mom, come, come, come. So I go and I tap him, I'm like, he's like, mommy, hold my hand, hold my hand. And I'm holding his hand. I'm like, are you okay? He says, yes, mom, okay, mommy. Mommy, don't go hold my hand. And I'm holding his hand. And then he, you know, because the anesthesia is still wearing off, he goes in and out of, you know, sleep. And then <laughs> I leave. And then the next day, so what happened after the second surgery was, I never had my son back. He wasn't the Kofi I knew after the first surgery. He was unable to hold himself to have a conversation for more than two minutes. He was asking for water every 10 minutes. I never slept now because now what happened was the next day his urine wasn't concentrating. The doctors were worried. Then he started hallucinating. I didn't even know what was happening. Apparently there was a temperature spike and that signals, that signals, um, uh, meningitis infection in the brain. So it was the next morning that Dr. Abdallah came and said, no, this is what we are suspecting. We need to start antibiotics ASAP. No problem. Got the antibiotics. Kofi was getting better. Thursday wasn't so good a day for him. But Friday, Friday, Kofi was okay. He, he was okay. He was okay now. We took him. Um, so my sister-in-law came, brought him food. He said he wanted kuntumri and um, bald plantain and she fed him and everything. We had to go and run an x-ray, actually. X-ray of his chest because in the morning, one of the doctors said they could hear some sort of fluid around the buildup around the lungs. So just to make sure it wasn't anything serious. And we did that. And then we came back and he said, oh, you know, he was wearing a diaper. He you know, wanted to pass to us. I said, okay, that's fine. You you do that. I, would. I was so dizzy because in the last, from Tuesday up until Friday, I hadn't shut my eyes. I have to be giving him water every 10 minutes and it's cold water. Kolebu, his, where his ward was, there was no fridge. I have to walk to his friend's ward, get the water every 10 minutes because once I put it down, it becomes warm, he won't drink it. So I was, I was beginning to have like um, dizzy spells. I was beginning to feel faint. So I told my sister-in-law, I'm going to the waiting area. I'm just going to sit down for a bit and I'll be back. Now I sat down in less than 10 minutes. My sister-in-law was running to me. And I saw the doctors rush towards where he was. So she says, there's an emergency, you need to come. And then I rushed in. And the doctors are like, no, you can't come, you can't come. I'm asking what's wrong because he was okay. He just said, I just told him I'll be back. And then all the doctors are over him. Look, I don't want to go over this again, but there was no defibrillator. There was no um, suction Whatever they they were literally using their hands on his chest in tents for 45 minutes trying to resuscitate him. I stood there for the first 10 minutes. I could see the, the rise and fall of his chest. And I knew that he was still with us because to see his chest, you know, go go up and down, it meant that there was life in him. But then now uh, when I saw his eyes roll back, I walked away and I started praying. And all the women in the ward just moved towards the waiting area, telling me, stop crying. We need to raise prayers. And they, look, I've never seen anything like that before. The whole hospital was full of women worshiping and screaming in prayers. And then 
I don't know. I don't even know. <laughs> I kind of feel like I just and and then waiting and hoping. Then a doctor walks in and said, "Well, we can't really get a heartbeat now. We are going to try and bring him back, but just to let you know that there's a possibility that he may not, we may not get a pulse." So I'm praying. I'm not listening to what he's saying. And about like 20 minutes later, my brother throws. I just see him throw his phone to the wall. Ama, Kofi is dead. I am screaming. That's all I'm. I was just screaming. I was screaming. Your doctors are holding me. You can't go there. I'm pushing everybody. Look. <sighs> I went to see him. He was lying there, motionless. And I was talking to him. I said, Kofi, you need to come back. Come back to mommy. I'm here. Come back. And then he's, <laughs> he's just lying down there. And I was wondering. So guess what? All the doctors run. I saw Dr. Banka. I saw Dr. Abdullah. Dr. Bansin. Almost all the neurosurgeons in that department were there suddenly. And holding me. Um, we all didn't know. They were shocked because they had all just spoken to Kofi minutes ago. What could have gone wrong? Nah. Not up until we had the autopsy. I never, ever knew that there was anything called a pulmonary embolism, what is called a PE, which rarely, rarely, rarely happens in children. Almost never happens in children. And Kofi's was just, it, till now, it doesn't even make sense because he just didn't have a pulmonary embolism. So a pulmonary embolism is when a blood clot moves from location in your body, usually from the leg, right? Because there's been no movement. A little movement and it moves from that area and gets stuck in your lungs so kofi wasn't just a pe it was what they termed what the um pathologist termed uh, bilateral pulmonary embolism massive bilateral pulmonary embolism what it means is that both of his lungs were blocked with huge clots and it would have been very difficult, well, for them to bring him back, considering the fact that there's really nothing for them to even use to work on a patient with a PE at a time like that. So this is what happened. Wow. This is not the first time I'm hearing this, but listening to you say it today, I'm sorry, Emma. No, you shouldn't be apologizing. You were you were there with me that night. You were yeah. you were literally on the floor with me. Yeah, but you know, listening to you say it tonight, you went to see him. I did. Yeah. I did. And I still don't... It's... Um, yeah, I'm still in denial too. It's fine. It's okay. I don't have the words. I think he's with LP in Ashali Bochi. So, yeah. I don't have the words. But it's been about four months. Yeah, it's four, yeah actually yesterday was exact. 9th August was exactly four months. Four months. Because it happened on the 9th of April. On a Friday. Yeah. It's been four months. And it still feels like... It's still, you know, unbelievable that that could happen. Because it was just too sudden. To Kofi. And I can't help but admire your courage and your strength. Thank you. Now, after Kofi passed, a lot of things happened, as I remember it. Um, on the night that he passed... I remember you trying to go into the room, into the ward to see him. Yeah. And I was told to prevent you from going to right. see him. I didn't understand. Right. At some point, I tried to go and see him. And I was prevented from going to see him. I think that was the beginning of many things that confused me, things I did not understand. Did, were you told why you were not supposed to go in to see him? To be very honest, I wasn't told why 
the doctors won't want me to go and see my son who they have claimed, who they claim has just passed. But nothing mattered at that, at that moment. He is my son. You tell me something that we've lost him. I'm not allowed to see my son. How am I not allowed to see my son? I, now, I, I don't know where the strength came from, but by the time I realized they were all out of my way, I was really pushing and nobody could stop me. I actually sat by his side for a couple of minutes and then in denial, moved back to the waiting area and scream and scream and scream and scream and scream and come back to him. And then Dr. Banka and Abdallah come and hold me. Because he did look like he was sleeping. He was sleeping. <laughs> he in was. fact, I could have sworn he moved a little bit. Yeah. You know, and it wasn't even the, you know, when we went in there, there was still some sound on the monitor. And I kept saying, there's still, there's still a chance. And then I look and realize that there was nothing. It wasn't on, like it wasn't on his thumb or anything. It was just, and yeah. So I wasn't told why I wasn't allowed to see him. But I kind of, I kind of think they do that a lot because um, they are worried some people will not be able to handle it. I mean, the shock. I don't know if some people pass out. Some people end up. Having my cardiac passed arrest. Out for a moment. My brother passed yeah, out. Brother yeah, he did. Out for a moment. He did. Yeah. But so many things happened that confused me, Amma. I think for both of us, for, for a lot of us, I mean, Amma, you are young and all your friends are young. So Kofi's passing exposed us to a lot of things that we otherwise would not have known until we turned 50 or, right. or older. Right. A lot of things were happening that left me with more questions, you know, about losing a dear one than answers. And you being the mother made things even more complicated. I, I, last week, you know, I could recall a bunch of things from what you had to wear to what yeah. you should not wear to what right. time you had to take a bath to whether or not you could go to the funeral home right. to when he was supposed to be laid to rest right. to the size of the 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 funeral right to even the the nature of the the casket or what he could even wear right all those things you know i i i was always very quiet sitting beside you but i'll go home to my husband i'm like ah kabuti they, they're saying she can't she can't do that what's all this like you know what what's what's all of this about what are some of the things that happened that you learned that you you think helped you deal with the loss and things that you absolutely would not recommend. Right. And um, no disrespect to tradition. Um, tradition will still be there even after I'm 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 not here on earth. But now I think that it it's pretty sad that um People who didn't know my child or me or what we stood for um, would have to come and sit and tell us what to do, how to do it, tell me what to do and how to do it. Um, well, uh, thankfully, thankfully, my family head, um, Ken Otopa, thank you so much. My family head is not, I mean, he, he of course, he believes in tradition, right? I was told first off that I cannot wear black. I cannot wear anything black because um, what I was told is that I am young. I would, I, I am more likely to have um, more kids. Um, and then his younger brother is there. So if I wear black, what it means is that I am saying that I don't want my son to come back to me because I can get pregnant and it will be Kofi coming back. Um, okay, so I had to wear white. I didn't have a problem with that. That was okay. That was fine. Where I had a problem or where I had to fight was when they said, oh, no, you can't go to transitions. You are not supposed to see him. Now, I'll tell you what. We lost them on Friday night. They said, Kualibu said, you cannot take him out of here up until Monday. Now, I hear the stories of how somebody spends just like two, three hours in Kualibu morgue and they change. No. Look, at that point, my son... Till now, my son is not. My son was not dead. I don't know what they were talking about, but I didn't want my son to change. Saturday, Bishop people had come to the house. I said, Bishop, I want to see my son. Is Kofi okay? When I woke up, that was the first thing I said. Where's Kofi? Is he okay? Is he all right? I need. I need. Okay, you guys go and check on him. So Bishop goes Saturday to check up on him and says, Amma, he's sleeping. Monday, 
my brother for morning he's at Kolibu trying to work on this court document and all of that finally moves him to transitions in the night he comes home with pictures and everybody's saying no you can't show her the pictures you can't I said y'all if you don't show me the pictures now I will lose my mind I want to see if he's okay y'all didn't have a choice now you won't believe after I saw my son there was this calmness there was peace that suddenly he looked like my baby and then um we arranged to go and see him a couple of days after again you cannot go to the funeral home what are you talking about i give birth to him i can't go to the funeral home to make sure my baby is okay to make sure to make sure that he doesn't they don't do anything that would change or distort his looks that was the most important thing to me I carried him in my womb for nine months. You think that I have lost him and you're going to tell me to stay away from him? A child I had when I was 19, my everything, that's not going to happen. And I told my family, and I said, Kenno, I can't, I can't, I'm sorry, I cannot conform to this tradition. I can't. And he said, you know what? Leave her. Ask her. Rather than we tell her what to do and say, bury him in a week. That was another thing. You cannot keep him past one week. What are you talking about? What was the reason for that? The reason is that it's like you keep, he's your first child and you keep him for long. You are inviting death into your home, your other children. I said, I'm not listening to anything right now. I will not listen to anybody. I am going to sit with Bishop to set a date that he, Bishop, is available. Why? Because my son was everything church. He, his last performance in church was New Year for Bishop. He's always on stage during Christmas. You are not going to tell me about some tradition my son did not know about. I am not going to. That my, and fortunately for me, my family had given an instruction and said, when they go to the morgue to have the, the last bath, nobody should pour libation around him because he was a Christian child. And that just made me feel so good. You know, and now everything I insisted Thankfully, my family understood. Well, I'm not his father's family. I don't even want to go into that side. But my family understood that. And, and they worked with me. Oh, we cannot lay him in state. I said, no, we are laying him in state. Kofi likes to look good. <laughs> and he would want everybody to see he's looking good. And he was looking good. So we actually laid him in state for about two hours. And that's what he would have wanted. At that point, now, it wasn't about what tradition wants me to do. It was, what, I'm thinking, what would Kofi want? And so I carried out what my son would have wanted. You know, I picked his casket. I picked his outfit. I went around with my brother. I looked when we went to um, transitions. I went to, I said, I want this. Oh, no, I don't want that. I want this. Yes, I picked his outfit. I packed his stuff. I did. I did everything by myself. Well, of course, when he was here, wasn't I? Why am I going to leave it, leave it up to people to do something and then just go and see? No, I was there Friday before the Saturday to make sure he was okay. I did everything to the last, to the last, to the last. Even as at the time they were draping the casket with the Chelsea thing and it was turned upside down. I went and went to turn it. They said I should sit down. I said, don't tell me to sit down. Why? <laughs> everything has to be perfect because Kofi liked things to precision. And I was going to carry it out to my last so, I mean, really, no disrespect to tradition, but when it came to me handling things for my son, I did the best way I would know he would have wanted it to be done. And I was more than, I was more than satisfied. I was more than happy. And um, should have seen his face. He looked very handsome. <laughs> should have seen his face. You should have seen his face. I mean, not you now because you saw it, but. Listeners, you should have seen his face. I've been asked this question so many times. There's a picture of you mm -hmm. bent over his casket. You had right. your hand on his With chest. Bishop holding me. Yes. I've been asked this so many times. Why that, why, why that what, was done? What, what was she saying to him? Did she say something to him? Did you say something to him? I did. Not necessarily say what I said, but it's... It's something that's done before they finally close the casket. So I have my last words with him. 
Yeah, so that's what I was doing. I was having my last words with my baby. That's what I was doing. I still go to the cemetery. I go to the cemetery. So he was born on a Friday. He passed on a Friday. Um, but before I started work, I would go there every Friday to spend time with my baby. It doesn't make sense to people, but it doesn't have to make sense to anybody. All that matters is that it makes sense to me and it makes sense to Kofi. And that's not going to stop. Because... It just doesn't go away. That's my baby. Do you have encounters with him? I haven't seen him since I saw him a week to his funeral. Um, I, I kept praying after we lost him. And I, I said, Kofi, you need to tell God to give me strength. Because if I don't have that strength, I won't be able to do things. Oh, I even forgot. Nah, they said I couldn't read a tribute. I wasn't supposed to read a tribute. So I asked them one question. Who is writing the tribute? Me, yeah? And I should let who go and read it. Who would read it the way it ought to be read? I said, nobody is stopping me. I mounted. I mounted the pulpit and I went to read. I went to read my son's tribute. Did they tell you why you should not read the tribute? You see, there's all this thing of, oh, you'll be reading and you cry. I said, yes. If I cry, I would there's, I would have, but why, why am I not allowed to cry? What's wrong with crying? Were you ever told not to cry? Yeah, I was told not to cry. I was told not to cry too much, whatever that meant. I was told not to cry too much. Because I have another child and I'm young, I have other children, whatever that meant. They said a whole lot of things. I, did, I didn't conform. I did not. Thankfully, my, I, have, I have a very supportive family who understand both tradition and Christianity. And so it was mainly what Kofi would have wanted. That is what I planned out for him. Well, that's what we planned out for him. And I remember the psychologist, my psychologist said, well, that's the best thing they could have done for you because if they took control over it, you would, it, would have, it would take like forever for you to get over it. But once you, you had like the planning, you took all those decisions, it, had, it, it didn't make it easy, but... I liked I liked what I how it went how how like everything turned out. Did you lose it at any point? Of course, of course. People are telling you that yeah, you have to stop crying. How are you crying? But your dad died. You cried and you stopped. Why are you crying? Of course, I lost it. I I still lose it. Are, I'm not talking to certain aunties. I'm not talking to certain family members. I'd rather just not hear what they have to say. You know. You don't always have to talk. I mean, they, you don't, if you don't have anything to say, don't talk. But to come and say, I, I, an auntie told me that you, you, you need to stop crying. I mean, yeah, why are you still crying? And why are you even thinking of committing suicide? Why do you want to commit suicide? Did you think of committing suicide? Why not? Why not? Why not? At that point, how was I, how, I mean, till now, still comes in my head. How am I supposed to live my life without my son by my side? Every time I think of how it happened, I saw my son take his final breath right in front of me. When I think about it, I feel this is how I feel like now. I feel like Kofi needs me. Everybody is talking about what they want to talk about. Everybody, listen, we all understand what it feels like to be here on earth because we are here. Nobody understands what it feels like to be on the other side, right? I feel like my son needs me. I feel like my son needs me there. Whether it makes sense to anybody or not, that's how I feel. You know, and everybody's like, oh, but how about Zane? Zane has his dad. Zane has everybody else around him here. I don't know who is there on my son. I don't know what is there. But, <laughs> I mean, at a point or at, at, during those moments, I'm like, yeah, I would, rather, I would rather go and try and see what's there. But I feel like he's lonely. Are you going to take that away from me? He is lonely. He's 13. And he's all by himself. Well, yeah, I know they'll say he's with God and everything. But I still feel like Kofi needs me.
I'll read some of your messages coming in now. Um, you can WhatsApp me on 020 000 0995. 020-000-0995. That's the number to reach me on on WhatsApp tonight. I'm talking to my friend, Ama, Cordelia Ama Salome. She lost her son four months ago. Last week, we spoke about losing a loved one and how to deal. Today, we are continuing that conversation and we're talking even more about the things that happen, the things you're allowed to do and not allowed to do and so much more. Um, Kay says, now, nah, I've never cried or been moved to tears like this before. Ever since my grandmother died, until the passing of the sweet boy Kofi, who I got to know through you and Asasi Radio, now nah, I cried. Now as I'm hearing the surrounding circumstances of his passing being narrated, I can't even help but tune off, and I'm sorry about that. All I can say is, my dear lady, know that it is well, God knows best. All right. Um, Martin says, oh, my God, this is a very sad story. I think Amma, um, okay. All right. Um, Kojo Asempa says, nah, I cannot stop listening to you guys. This is really sad. Henrita says, wow, nah. This is so sad. And Amma, you've been so strong for the past few months. This, it is well. Um, Horatio says, God strengthening you. And God bless you with all that you need. You can WhatsApp me on 020-000-0995. I have lots of hugs coming to you, Amma. Um, thank you, to those of you who are sending that in. I appreciate it. Thank you. God bless you. Amma, have you had to talk to other people who have had similar, have experienced um, similar losses? Or ha has anyone reached out to you? with a similar story. Yes, yes. I have to mention him here. He called me and... Uh, Reverend Eastwood Anaba, you know, he lost his kids some years ago. He did. And um, he called me and he said, you know, at the point he called, I was like... Um, I was thinking of all the things I probably could have done to save Kofi. I felt like there was more I could have done. Why didn't I realize that there was a P happening, even though I didn't know what the P pulmonary embolism was? Um, he, he said something. He said, stop the what ifs. Stop it. Stop it. Um, God gives and God takes. Um, you were praying for a miracle. Yes, I was. We all were. But that was God's way of a miracle. And he told me to grieve in my own way. He said to hold myself together, especially for Zane. And his words were soothing and very comforting because this is somebody who knows what it feels like to lose a child. And so I could feel he was coming from a place of genuineness and not just telling me what he thinks I should do. And that really helped me. Yeah, it did. Well, God bless him. Bless him. Sicho says, now I really wish someone could understand what Ama feels. But the truth is, it's only God and herself who understand. I really pray for more strength and God's protection for her. You can WhatsApp me on 020 000 0995. That's the number to reach me on. And I think I can activate my phone lines now. You may call in if you'd like. The number to call me on is 020 000 9951. 020 000 9951. Now, this is so sad, really. And may God grant you, Ama, the strength that you need. And that's from Mauritia. Um, hi, now, good evening. Please tell our dear Amma to please take heart. This is a really sad story. Yes, um, it is sad. You, you don't know the half of it. None of us know the half of it. None of us would understand what you have experienced. And, you know, the reason I wanted us to even talk about this today is 
the sort of interference that people who don't know what you're feeling bring and the, and, and the, ins the insistence that you do things a certain way. Let me talk to this caller and then I'll come back to you. 020-000-0995 is a number to WhatsApp me on. Hello? Hello. Hi, Hi good, good evening. evening. Welcome, Welcome to the, the show. show. Good evening. Good evening. Um, uh, um, I just tuned in onto the show and I'm, I was retouched by the lady and I'm sorry for what she's going through. Um, I may not really relate, but I lost my dad a few years ago and I really got lost. And I really know how it feels like no one to lose a child that you did is, is, is something else. But I just thank God God is with her. I'm sorry about your dad. And thank you so much for calling. Marion says, wow, I'm, a, I'm so lost for words. May God heal her. I'm so sure that her son misses her so much. And Marion was actually at the hospital. Um, you probably don't know. I, I, I do. Marion, thank yeah. you so much. She was there when we had the second surgery. Yeah, yeah. yeah she was right by my side. Yeah. Yeah. She was there. And she was there on the night. Also we love you, Marion. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good evening. What's, What's your name? name? Yeah, good evening. I'm Kingsley calling from Bree. Kingsley, you're welcome to the show. Thank you. I actually I'm I'm in tears listening to our young dear lady and um, I personally wish I could do something seriously. But I, I pray the Lord keeps her and the Lord comforts her. And I wanna say that she should know God knows all things. That's that's all I'll say to her. He does. Amen. Thank you so much, Kingsley. 020-000-0995 is a number to WhatsApp me on. Or you can call on 020-000-9951. That's the number you can reach me on on our phone lines. Amma, what would you say to someone listening to us who has experienced a similar loss and does not know what to do? I'll tell them that they should. There is no written down format on how to grieve um especially if you I, I pray they have the support of at least one or two people um they should grieve in their own way on their own terms take their time i'm still not able to go to church because it reminds me of him so much i'm still not able to go in certain places because it brings back memories um i'm still not able to do a lot of things and it's okay it's fine I'm not angry with God, but um, I'm taking my time. And so you, you need to take your time. Don't let anybody rush you. No, don't let anybody say, oh, you have to forget about it. It's easier said than done. You, how do you forget about somebody that has been a part of your life? It's not, it's not impossible. And, you know, they say um, time makes it better. It's four months. I broke down yesterday. I broke down in the office. And my bosses are like... Well, and I'm like, today is exactly four months. And then they're looking at me and they all just keep quiet. It doesn't get better. Sometimes it does, but not all the time. And it's okay if you're one of those people who, who happens to have a hard time getting by with, with the grief. But please, just have, have thoughts thought of, the of the person, person and what the person would have wanted. Rather than listen to all the noise around you. There's a lot of noise that goes on around you. And try not to get angry. Sometimes they really mean well. They just don't know how to go about it. So they just say things that they think ought to be done. Not, not in, a, in a bad way, but sometimes they are, they're just trying to help. So, so yeah, yeah um, I, I think, think you should, should just take, take your time. It's important. important. Let me talk to this caller. Hello? Hello yes, sir. What's, What's your name? name? Now, my name is Prince. I'm calling from Katwa. Prince, you're welcome to the show. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm all cheered up right now. And it's such a sad story. It's, 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 it's really, really sad. And I feel, I really feel for our sister. I just want to tell her that she should take solace in the fact that she see what's really, really, really make that impact. It really made, made, made an impact because I quite remember that time I heard, I heard him on SRT radio and I just saw him. He was that a sweet guy and just to hear of his loss, I, I, I really felt very pain. But it's 
is the Lord that gave it, the Lord that sick. And I, I, I wish that he, he should still be strong. I loved it when she said that Kofi was a Christian, and I know that she's also a Christian. And sometimes we cannot explain some of these things, but just take heart and know that God has his own way of giving him back Kofi. So you should just take heart, and I know that definitely there's light at the end of it. Thank you so much. God bless you. Much appreciated. 020-000-9951 is the number to call me on. Or you can WhatsApp me on 020-000-0995. Hello now. It's not easy at all. I really empathize with my dear sister, Amma. I am a father of three, and I cannot even imagine losing one of these young souls. The hurt is deep indeed, but Jehovah is watching. My condolences from David. Hello. Hi, no. No. Hi, Missy. What's your name? My name is Nadio. Now you're welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. Hi, Na. I pray for the strength of God. Amen. Because I was with my dad when all of this was happening. Now, I'm sorry, can you please turn down the volume on your radio set so we can hear you? We're getting some feedback in the studio. It wasn't well himself, but then we all had hope. I lost my dad too. It's been three months. It hasn't been easy. You hear everybody telling you you're going to be fine. Everything is going to be fine. You don't know how to do it, right? It feels like everybody knows what to do. And you don't know how to do it. It's just so hard. I'm so sorry we lost there. I'm sorry we lost you there. Um, please do call back if you can. Amma, is there something you would have liked to hear that you didn't hear from the people around you? Um, I think... I think when I start explaining about how I, 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 I want to go and um, and um, be with him, I would have wanted them to say, oh, yeah, that's a very, very, very legitimate thing to say, you know? And then they lash out at you and say, yeah, that's so selfish. How can you say that? How can you think like that? And how about Zane? And what happens to Zane? And what happens? And I just felt like, you know, so I just had to stop talking about how I was feeling or what I wanted to do or the thoughts that were running through my mind and try and fight it off or deal with it on my own because nobody, nobody understands where I'm coming from. Nobody, not even up till now. And I still go in my room and cry. I still, <laughs> there are days I just go off. I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to see anybody. And, and I, Nah, it doesn't get better. Nah, said it, it doesn't get better. And there's nothing worse than... And you know, when it happened, we had I had, like, everybody around me. Now I'm, I'm on my own, you know? And sometimes you just really wish you could get so, just one person to understand where, you, where you're coming from. And when it doesn't happen, you're on your own. You. Everybody would... Everybody has, I, I mean, I n never thought about it this way, but yeah, when it happened, your house was full. <laughs> but now I, your house is empty. <laughs> How do you I deal still, with everybody just leaving? I was scared. Point? I was scared. I was scared. I didn't want people to stop coming by. I didn't want people to stop calling me. But I'm not going to lie about the fact that I still have really very thoughtful friends who still call almost every day. At least once a week or something to check up on me. I still have friends like that. And I'm very grateful. And family like that. I'm very, very grateful to them. But there's more of loneliness now than um, having people around or yeah. having people to talk to. Yeah. It gets lonelier by the minute. Whoosh. <sighs> Amma, please take heart. And discard any evil thoughts that may come to you. There is so much to love. 
in this world. Okay. That's a message. Um, you didn't add your name, but we thank you for sending that in. 020-000-0995 is a number to reach us on. On um, WhatsApp. This one says, and I'm looking at her on Facebook. She's so beautiful. Well, that she is. Definitely. Henrita says, um, God bless Amma and her friends for staying by her in hard times. Amma is such a strong lady. I also had my child at 19. I cannot even imagine her leaving. And that's from Henrita. And Henrita's baby is also 13 years old. Oh, now. too far away. Yes. Yeah. Oh, too far away. If the, if the child is turning 14, because he would turn 14 on the 30th of November. Of November yeah. yeah. <sighs> wow, well, now, how is Amma even okay right now? This is just crazy. How is she okay? Are you okay? I'm not okay. Everybody expects me to be okay. So I laugh a lot and I, I, I pretend. I, let me just say I'm pretending. I'm pretending to be okay because all the other people around me, I think kind of, especially in my house, um, when my brother and my sister-in-law and my nephew and niece, and look, they don't make it any easier. They keep asking where Kofi is. And I remember after the funeral, his little brother came to me and said, Mommy, why, why is my brother in a box? Why can't I see his hands and his legs? I don't like that Kofi. Mommy, you lied. You said after the second surgery, he's coming home. Well, has he finished the surgery? I said, yes. Mommy, so why is Kofi not here? Mommy, call Kofi. I want to talk to him. Look, till today, he's still asking of his brother. It, I'm not okay. I cannot be okay. I only have to be okay because Zayn looks after me. And when I have my son sit and he starts screaming and crying and I walk up to him and ask him, why is this mommy, my brother, Kofi? And he's crying. And then he says, mommy, I don't want you to die. Don't die. Mommy, please don't die. Mommy, don't go to the hospital. Don't go and sleep over there. If he's sick and I have to take him to the hospital, mommy, I don't want to go to the hospital. I have all of this to deal with. I have all of this to deal with. And, and the truth is, in as much as I'm dealing with the loss of my son, he's dealing with the loss of a brother. A brother who would sit by him every day, help him with his homework, talk to him. He's, he, he's four years, but it's still hard. I think people quote wrongly when they say that time makes it better. What they really want to tell you is that time teaches you how to manage the pain. Not that the pain goes away. And that's from Kwame. And he says, please continue to take care of yourself, my dear sister. Thank you, Kwame. Thank you. And that's all our time. Amma, thank you so much for coming and sharing the way that you have. And I believe that just by having this conversation with us today, you have helped many people listening in similar situations and don't know what to do. And I pray that God continues to give you the strength. Amen. And I pray that somehow he shows you that Kofi is okay. Amen. Thank you so is. much. Nah, thank you. My name is Nasha Ko, and this has been Between Hours Live on Asasi Radio. We still have the video up on Facebook for those of you who joined us midway, so you can watch from the beginning. Enjoy the rest of our programs. I'll be back on your radio at 2 p.m. Tomorrow. Good night. She's cold,